Okay, we're recording. Heck yeah, we is. Ooh, hey guys, welcome to the Hot Johnson. Uh, we're doing a bit of a different episode this week. A little unplugged, unmanicured, if you will. Yeah, I love this. So we're not filming this episode. Bron and I chatted recently and we were like, let's just try an episode where we're just like a little bit more relaxed in a little bit more of a comfortable atmosphere. No video, just audio. Just audio. And so like normally we record on the weekends during the day when it's sunny out tonight. We are recording in a living room with a lovely real wood fire that not Bron f- built. Not a fake fire, a real fire. It's gorgeous. It- it smells really good too. It does. Like the crackling of the wood. And yeah, so we're just like, we're really cozy tonight. And um, we got a little beverage. We're having a little uh, late night drink. Delicious beverage. Yeah. Tonight's episode, Braun and I are just going to have a little heart to heart, little brother, sister catch up. That's the intention. We didn't even talk about what we wanted to talk about other than, because we usually do, like we usually prep and set the intention to talk about a specific topic in service of our audience. Mm -hmm. Uh, But tonight we are switching it up and wanting to have a heart to heart and just, yeah, check in with each other and Mm -hmm. be real with where we're at. Yeah. Yay. Love it. Yay. So that being said. Yes. Do you want to go first? About what? (laughs) Well, you and I (laughs) connected the other night. And I hope it's okay in me sharing this. You if share not, whatever you want. We can edit this shit out. But you did say that you would love to show up a little more vulnerably. Mm. Be a little more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So in the spirit of being vulnerable. Sure. What am I most present to? Something that yeah. I often ask my clients. Mm-hmm. What are you most present to? What's going on in the heart of Braun Johnson? I think overall life is really good. Like if uh, if I want to talk about something vulnerable that's perhaps a challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm still definitely thinking about my ex-girlfriend who mm. I separated from about three, almost three and a half months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were only dating for seven months and it was a absolutely gorgeous relationship. Mm-hmm. So, so, so good. But through that experience, I learned that I didn't want to be a stepdad, mm-hmm. which was such a hard realization but a obviously a necessary one and Mm -hmm. that's the thing right you go into life situations relationships experiences with certain expectations or desires and you always learn something sometimes it works out exactly the way you want or the way you think it's going to work out and sometimes it ends up being a learning lesson and this was a big big beautiful and challenging learning lesson. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely present to that. I, I still think about her every day. I'm mm-hmm. still in love with her, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I know that I really had to use my, you know, my, my logic to recognize that that is not what I, that is not the path that I could walk down because it's just ultimately not what I wanted was to be a stepdad. Mm -hmm. Right. And my heart wanted her. She was, she was and is like the perfect woman for me. Um, but yeah, that, and the kids, the kids are great, but just the role and what that meant to, you know, father another man's children Mm -hmm. for the next 10, 15 years of my life Mm -hmm. would, would be beautiful in its own way. But my soul, my heart, my authentic self didn't want that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was the hardest thing, like definitely like in the top five hardest things I've ever had to come to realize. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely something I'm very present to, uh, to this day. I'm still, you know, grieving from time to time, you know, grief, it pops up at the most random times and, um, it's getting less and less these days. I mean, it has been a while, three and a half months, but yeah, I still, mm-hmm. you know, I still think about her and still have so, so much love for her. Um, she's, uh, she's an amazing woman. So. Yeah. 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 That's a hard one when uh, so many things feel like they align so well between mm. you and a partner. And then there's like a component maybe of the situation in your lives that don't align. And it's hard to walk away from something like that. Totally. But it is what it is. And I am a firm believer in 
as we move through life, there's always going to be something that's a better fit for who we are and what we want Mm -hmm. down the road. I believe that ultimately from the highest point, everything is always working out for us. And I know that there's going to be something that's a healthier fit for me and also a healthier fit for her. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have stayed. Heck, I probably could have stayed for a lot longer, probably another, you know, because I've thought about this, probably another two years. But the truth is that wouldn't have been fair to her or the kids because they all deserve a man who wants to show up authentically in that role full time. Yeah. Right. So something's going to something better is going to show up for her. So there's learning lessons all around. Yeah. And I guess that is the thing if you've never because I know you'd never dated someone with children before. No, not on this level. Yeah, it's um, I have in the past and um, it can it obviously like I think whether it's like you're a real parent or a step parent, that is not something that you go half half hearted into. Yeah. A lot of people do. And it turns out not ideal let's yeah. say. So yeah. I think for the sake of the kids, it's nice when people show up a hundred percent wanting to be all in on, on that. It's really nice when kids have <laughs> parents who want to be parents. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sure. So I know that was super hard for, for you and, and everyone involved, but it's like at the same time, I hear you saying, you know, it's the value of whether, whether it's this situation or any dating situation, like, are we being really honest with ourselves? Mm-hmm. And if we're not at some point, it's like, yeah, you could have continued to stay. You can continue to stay in any relationship for, I mean, I've been so guilty of that. Staying in relationships way too long because Mm -hmm. you're just not being honest with yourself. Hey, audience, put up your hand if you've stayed in a relationship (laughs) longer than you should have. Oh, my God. 80% of the audience puts (laughs) up their hand. I think I wasted like majority of my 30s doing that yeah oh me too yeah Uh, well 20s yeah 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 but as you said too within that it's like relationships i think that's the cool thing that we can look at relationships like when they end i always like to think of a relationship as the biggest it's like the biggest self-development tool ever it is a magnifying glass to show you where you're still struggling it's a magnifying glass and it's a mirror yeah. Ain't that the truth? It is. Yeah. 100%. Um, if you choose to look at your your breakups as like, okay, what did I learn from this situation? What do I want differently next time? And what was my part in this? Mm-hmm. Then like they do just keep getting better and better. Totally. You know? That's something that I've always loved about you. And I feel like I have that in a pretty big way. But I'll talk about you for a second because I've always seen this with you. As you've walked through life, I've seen you very proactively and consciously choose to look at the learning lessons in all of your life experiences. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. I, that's uh, to be, If I'm being honest, it's a huge reason why I respect you and like have a lot of love for you. Mm-hmm. Other than you're my sister. Yeah, I, we're related. I you have to love fucking me. Fucking have to love you. <laughs> but I have a lot of respect for you because of that. I think it's a very admirable, mature, and just potent trait of any human being who has the willingness and the like emotional intelligence to stop themselves midlife challenge or like breakup or getting fired from a job or quitting a job or whatever and stopping and being like, where's the learning lesson here? What yeah. am I, what am I learning? so that I can be better next time. I don't see a lot of people doing that. And maybe, I, I mean, maybe maybe there are, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen it on the level that I've seen it with you. So well, that's me giving you an air high five right now. Thanks, brother. Yes. Um, first of all, I appreciate you saying that. And second of all, I don't think I've always been that way. That's been a learned... I'd say you've been that way for the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, Which is a long time. Yeah. I guess it's just like, what is the alternative? You know, you can, a situation can happen in your life and you can just like, be like, oh, this really sucks and focus on how much it sucks. And I think that there is a healthy component of when these things happen in our lives, whether it's like you said, a breakup, a loss of a job or whatever, to allow yourself to like feel those crappy emotions. 
But like to not, what is the point of sitting in that and bathing in that and staying in like victimhood as opposed to like, literally, I just, I guess I'm a firm believer that everything in our lives, there is a learning, there is something to be learned from every situation. And life is always getting better if you look at it that way and applying those learnings to the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how life keeps getting better. Like life totally. keeps getting better because of that. I think that there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to hold that attitude yet because not enough good things have happened in their lives in order for them to like even be able to like care or how can I say this? Like I don't I don't think a lot of people are able to see that if they have that attitude, life can get better mm -hmm. because of how many bad things have happened in their lives. Right. It's just like one shit storm after another. Yeah. As opposed to like being able to know and trust that there is going to be sunshine yes. at the end of the road or yes. light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And also I think like, yes, I want to pause on that point because yeah, like I think a lot of people have had very a lot of challenges more yeah. you know i would say relatively speaking you and i are extremely privileged human beings on this planet mm -hmm. right and so i think that most people haven't had the opportunity or been put in the circumstance where they've been able to have that attitude where they can say you know what's the learning lesson and life will get better if i take it and learn it and move yeah. forward. You know, they're still processing from the past um, so much unresolved trauma and experiences that have, uh, that have hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, I totally, totally agree with you on that. And yeah, my curiosity with, with someone and anyone listening who relates to that would be like, yeah, can you even just think of one of these experiences in your life where you like, it's an experience that you look at it like it was a shitty, a shitty thing. Mm hmm. Is there one positive that you can take from that experience? Something you learn from it, a way that you changed for the better, a, you know, some, yeah, like, yes, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I hope, I hope, I hope that we can get to that. Absolutely. I, I mean, I mean, and that's why we're showing up is to encourage that those kinds of questions. And I mean, at the end of the day, our our minds are so powerful that if we continue to look at all of the painful things that happen to us, we're just going to create more pain. Mm -hmm. at, yeah. some, at some point, we have to shift or at least try to shift our point of focus to move towards thinking of our past and our perhaps current situation from a perspective of, okay, what is going okay for me or what is going well for me? Mm -hmm. Because until we do, then we're going to continue to be inundated with negative thinking. Totally. And that just sends us into that trauma cycle, pain, uh, shame spiral yeah. where we can't see anything positive, totally. let alone the learned lessons from our past that help us have a better life in the future. Yeah. And, you know, having compassion for those of us who are kind of stuck in that loop because it's like, like you said, so often if numerous bad things happen or maybe we grew up in a household where there was just always focus on negativity, you know, it can be really easy for those patterns to get really stuck in the way that we continue to think. 100%. Um, but I think that there's real power in knowing that we can put a, a stop in that thought process and like over time start to shift our thoughts to like you said, focusing on some of the positives and then it starts to just totally. become more of our set point. I think that's actually something so important to point out because I know that there's a lot of people listening to this that are on a healing journey right now. And the truth is, and I just want to say this because I think it's so important and I don't think it's said enough in the wellness healing personal growth space that the difference between someone who is living a life where they're experiencing mental, emotional pain more time than not, and a person who is perhaps what Brene Brown, because I like Brene. Mm -hmm. Shut up, Brene. Hey, girl, Brene. What up, girl? Call us. 
<laughs> what is she? Come be on the Hot Johnson. Why is she calling us? Because she's going to be on the Hot Johnson. She's way too busy for us right Fuck now. That. Maybe in a couple of years. <laughs> what, what Brene Brown calls a wholehearted life. So the difference between someone who is living a life where they're experiencing mostly emotional pain and someone who's living a wholehearted life and this is all research based, right? Is that the person who's living a wholehearted life is someone who believes they are worth it. Mm. That's it. Yeah. And that's, again, that's research based, what, which may not sound like a lot, but you have to really think about this because you're probably someone who has had the thought, what does it take to live a really good life? I need this. I need that. I need more money. I need... Uh, a better relationship, better health. But the truth is, is that in order to get into that higher mental emotional space, Brene Brown in her research shows that it's all about your fundamental belief about yourself. And what is, so what does this mean? What is my point? The point is, is that when we start believing that we are worthy of living a happier, more authentic, more beautiful more enriched life, or at least walk the path towards that, we will start actually believing that and feeling that and ultimately manifesting those kinds of experiences that are unique and authentic to us in our lives. Yeah. So much of it comes down to our underlying belief of what we are worthy of. No, no, no. Not some of it. All the, of it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's so important to highlight because there's, you know, there's a, such a feeling of struggle on the wellness path. And the truth is there doesn't have to be what you like. If you're listening to this and you're struggling with something, what you have to do right now is stop and take a deep breath and put your hand on your heart and your belly. And you have to practice. This doesn't come overnight, but it is about a practice. You have to start practicing believing that you are worthy of being happy. You are worthy of feeling love. It doesn't matter what has happened to you in the past because that's the thing. It's like our past traumas are what quote unquote get in the way, but you have to take responsibility of the narrative that's playing out in your nervous system, that's playing out in your head. And you have to interrupt and stop believing in those trauma thought patterns. I know what you might be thinking. Harder said than done, sure. But it comes down to a practice. Easier said than done? Easier said than done, thank you. <laughs> but it's a practice. Yeah. Right? And the more you practice, the more you will be able to show up in your life and just be more gentle on yourself. Basically, how can you start loving yourself the same way that Kanye loves himself? Without the narcissism. <laughs> okay, enough um, <laughs> philosophizing and stuff, Ron. <laughs> Phil philosophizing? Philosophizing. Is that how you say it? Yep. Enough philosophy, guys. Let's rewind here. What did you learn from your relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that was a good point, though? It was a great point. Okay, cool. A thousand percent, but cool. we're focusing on your vulnerability. I just want people to, like, realize and i'll put a cap on this right now and then yeah. we'll get to your question i want people to realize that they can start feeling worthy now nothing in your life has to change in order for you to feel good positive beautiful worthy of love nothing has to change except practicing a different attitude consider that just consider that totally. that's all i want to say yep change your thoughts change your <laughs> life yeah, that's all i want to say okay Okay. relationships they teach us things what is the biggest thing you learned from your last relationship i already said it i don't want to be a stepdad is that the biggest thing you learned yeah okay straight up okay so i guess I that for is sure the biggest thing i learned that's good moving forward that you do you want to have your own children if the right woman comes along and it's a vibe sure i think you know growing up you know me do you remember me always saying how I always wanted kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't until like four or five years ago, <laughs> I think like just before COVID hit for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know why it just happened at this time where I was like, maybe I'd be okay with not having kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's because 
the reality of having children mm-hmm. is a lot different than the fantasy of having children. A hundo P. Right. Yeah. And so I'm not attached to having kids. Yeah. The moving forward. If it happens, great. Mm-hmm. Like for real, for real. Like in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. If it does, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Well, you are a man. You could be like Mick Jagger. You've got up until 70 years of age to change your mind. So Or <laughs> Tony Robbins. Why? He's like 63 and he just had a kid a couple years ago. Did he? Yeah. Isn't his wife like a similar age? Uh, No. Really? What's her name? Sage? Yeah. I'm gonna, is it Sage? No. I don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. Is it Sage? Shit. No clue. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I think she's younger. I don't, I okay. don't know. Okay. Okay. She's Anyways. definitely in her 40s or 50s. I don't know. Okay. You got it. Who, care? Who cares? <laughs> People do whatever they want. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so children, um, what about what is something you are going to take moving forward to your next relationship? Like how you feel you could show up better next time? Like what did you learn in this relationship where you're like, I could have been better with that, that in the next one, maybe you would do differently. Okay. If I'm being real, my honest answer to that is, I might get emotional here, but in that relationship, she was such a beautiful, beautiful human. Mm -hmm. And you you know how much I loved her. Mm -hmm. And I learned, you know, there's things in life that we know logically. Mm -hmm. And something that I've known logically forever is that, I don't need a lover to make me happy. Mm -hmm. I don't need a partner to make me happy. Because you make you happy. And now that I've had someone like her, who is like the most incredible woman I've ever met in my Mm -hmm. life. Now that I've had that, I, I know that a partner can't make me happy because I just left her. Mm. And so the answer to your question, what am I going to take in my next relationship? It's not, the focus is the relationship with myself Mm -hmm. and to continue leveling up in my own life and being the best Braun Johnson I know how to be for myself Mm -hmm. and to acknowledge that I'm really the only one that can make me happy. And again, it's something that I've always known logically, but like going through this breakup really made me realize on like such a deeper level, like, oh yeah, wow. Finding, finding true love outside of yourself in another person isn't the answer at all. To all life's answers and your happiness. Correct. Yeah. Because if it was, I'd still, you know, I would have still, I would have like still went with her. Yeah. In other words, I, I chose to let go of the love of my life because the lifestyle that surrounded her life was not a fit for my authentic self. Yep. And so that means that in order for me to be truly happy and truly in my power and my authenticity, I had to let that go. Mm-hmm. And it was fucking devastating. Mm-hmm. But it also means that the higher love is within me. Yeah. And again... Logically, I knew that, but I'm experiencing it on a visceral soul, heart, nervous system level moving forward. So to answer your question, more authenticity in the world is what I'm bringing into my next relationship. Mm. I just keep leveling up, baby. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, of course, I'm not obviously not perfect. No one's perfect. But if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm excited for that next monogamous relationship that I get into because I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm not ready for it yet, Mm -hmm. but when it does come, it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. And I also so so realize this more that now more than ever, I so do not need it. Mm -hmm. I so do not need it. I'm, I'm cool in general. I'm feeling so good about life right now. That's a powerful place to be. And I think I wish society taught us more about that. You know, like, well, what do you think the Hot Johnson podcast is for? <laughs> 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 Replacing education since 2024. Well, for, for real, like how, for how many of us, how much of our <laughs> lives did we spend? And people, a lot of us still are looking for that partner to make us feel complete. Yeah, fuck that. To make our lives feel so happy and fulfilled where it's like, 
ultimately the goal is, as you just said, building a life that feels so fucking good on your own that when you do find the perfect person, you could walk away from it if it's not the fully right fit because you are com- complete enough on your own and fulfilled enough on your own that if it's not, yeah, if it's not the right fit, you can walk away from that. What a privileged place to be in though, where we can actually make that decision. Mm-hmm. In other words, years ago, not so long ago, the answer was no, no, no. You stay. You stay because yeah. if you don't, then you might die, mm-hmm. right? Or you will die or like it just, it Are wasn't. We talking ancestral like times where we needed to stay together and hunt and. hundred percent. But even like 50 years ago. Like grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Hated each other, but he <laughs> needed S- to. Stayed together because that's yeah. what, that's what humans for the vast, vast, vast majority of mm-hmm. our species had to do in order to survive. Yeah. And so how f- like how how amazing is it that we actually have the opportunity to even make that decision? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? I'm just wondering if we should take a pee break. You have to pee? <laughs> a little bit. Okay. This drink is going through me. Okay. We'll pause and we'll be back in uno momento. After today empties her bladder. Please enjoy a word from our sponsors. Are you going to sing? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Da, da, da. If you know what that hum is off of, the first person, I actually promise this, the first person that sends me the answer, I will email them or Venmo if you're American, $50. Welcome back. Hey guys, I'm back. I tried to do a commercial. I My creative juices weren't flowing. Hmm. So instead I gave the audience an opportunity to win $50 if they could guess the hum that i was humming oh cool do you know it oh, let's hear it i didn't hear it i was taking a leak yeah i'll give the I'll, i don't even want i just want to see if anyone knows if anyone is you're as, done it's it's from it is from something you don't even know what it is of course i do oh, okay I just don't want to like give a hint. <clears throat> I want, I Go want it. Ahead. It's a game. You know how much I love games. Bron loves games. I want to play a game. Okay. Oh. Are you, we're at 30 minutes in. Really? Yeah. Feels like an hour. <laughs> We've been having fun. Are yeah. you having fun? Uh, so much fun. Okay. Yeah. Curious if you guys like this style of convo or do you like our other style of convo? I like, better. I like both I for like different this. reasons. I like this. I like both for different reasons. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm feels more fun maybe it's because we're drinking booze so how about you tell us vulnerable stories about you or (gasps) anything that you feel like you want to talk about share from your heart dentist yeah for those of you don't know i call my sister dentist bron calls me dentist i call him bronk or yeah or bront or brontits or brontits we got lots of weird so many names for each other Um, it's been dentist for a while so tell us (laughs) or dennis (laughs) I don't think that's been one. Oh yeah, Dennis. I call you Dennis. I call you since De- when? Oh, you're deaf. You've <laughs> never heard me call you Dennis. Legit, from working in radio for twenty years yeah. and wearing headphones every day, I probably am a little you're deaf. deaf. Yeah. Okay. She thinks I'm calling her dentist when I'm really calling her Dennis. Dennis. Okay. All I'm right. just being a goof. Just There's no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Um. Well, since we're on the topic of relationships, sure. Let's talk relationships let's talk about relationships Relationships. (laughs) (laughs) um well as you know braun i have found myself recently in the in the throes of passion oh my love and passion tell us um tell us your heart yeah well to get to get super honest and vulnerable and raw if it's not raw it's wrong wrong. (laughs) I don't think I've really ever talked publicly about this, but um, my relationship situation for the last, I don't know, decade has been kind of fucky bucky. Um, That is code for that's Braun and I language for like fucked up. Um, So, yeah, like a decade ago, I was in a relationship with someone who was um, accused of sexual assault and 
That was Has one- it been that long? <clears throat> it was Holy crap. Well, no, it's been about eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think it was seven years. Twenty seven and a half. It was seven and a half years ago. Yeah. Is it twenty seventeen? Yeah. Um, and it was with somebody who was like, I thought my soulmate, who was like my best friend, my lover. And it was just, you know, I've been reluctant to like talk about it. I'm a pretty open book, but it's not just my situation and story to tell and to talk about. So I haven't really talked about it. For sure. But I will just say that that was probably one of the most traumatic, stressful periods of my life. You were also <laughs> low-key in a cult and almost got branded at the time. <laughs> it was also at the same time that I was in Nixium, if anybody knows the self-development program that was in Vancouver that, yes, ended up being a sex cult. And HBO did a documentary about it. Yeah. If you, the Vow. if you haven't seen The Vow, watch it. Um, so I was like a coach in that organization at the same time. And they actually used when I was like, when that shit went down with my ex who was going through the sexual assault stuff, the people in Nixium used that as an opportunity to get closer to me. Yeah. They were like, we know you're going through this. Yeah. Like we, and it was literally then that they were like try tried to get me into like the for anybody who doesn't know what nixium and dos is this is gonna just sound kind of crazy but in a nutshell they used it as an opportunity to try and get me into this crazy ass fucking sex cult and wasn't presented to you as a sex cult, no obviously. of course it was present i mean that's the thing. Anybody, I still to this day have people who are like, how did you get involved in something like that? It's like, well, yeah, it was never, a, it was never presented as a sex cult. It was a self-development program. Sidebar, if you're someone who ever judges anybody for getting into a cult, do your research. You clearly <laughs> don't know anything you're talking about. Yeah. And it was like still to this day. I mean, there was a lot of great things that I got from it because the program wasn't developed or it wasn't created by Keith, who's now in prison. Yeah. He was the sex cult leader. He didn't like develop any of this material that they taught in this in Nixium. He just like stole it from other, you know, personal growth, personal growth content, but yep. he just turned it into a, a program in a school where you'd go and take classes and learn and implement it. So it's like he, he was just cl pretty fucking clever in monetizing it, putting basically stealing legit content, putting it together and creating a school. Totally. So anyways, anyway, I was involved in that at the same time this shit with my ex went down. And so, yeah, it was literally just like the most, like I look back at that period of my life. That was also the time that I was, so I was in radio. I was on TV at the time. I was in school full time for nutrition. Right. And I was also in my girl group, in my girl band. Uh. So there was just like so much shit going on at the same time. Wow. And um, what a I, time of life. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever been in a situation before where I was like in legit just survival mode. Yeah. Like I came out of that experience. And this is what they say about trauma is like the person that you were before the traumatic experience and the person that you are after are two different people. Yeah. I had to go into a different um, way mode. of being a different yeah. mode to survive that because yeah. it was just so Dramatic. fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, in a nutshell. So going back to the relationship stuff, I feel like that fundamentally shifted something for me where from that point forward, I didn't think, I didn't really believe in love anymore. Like I didn't believe in true love anymore. And I think there was always a part of me, like when I look back and, you know, so many girls grow up and they're like, they dream of the white picket fence and their wedding day. Like yeah. I never dreamed of that. No. And I don't know if that's because I was more just career focused by nature or I feel like maybe it's more because growing up the the chubby, ugly duckling didn't feel worthy of that, worthy of it. Like yeah. anybody wanted me for that. Yeah. 
um, it probably just became a belief in my mind that that wasn't going to happen for me. Right. I don't know, but that sounds accurate. That compiled with this experience 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. it went next level where I was just like, and this wasn't, I wasn't aware of this, but looking back now, this is essentially what's happened this last 10 years because before that situation happened with my ex, I had a lot of great relationships in terms of me feeling like me and my partner were really in love. Like it felt like real true good love. And I had really great relationships and me after that situation, my relationships were very different. Right. And the partners that I chose were very different. And in my mind, I knew that they weren't going to be long-term partners right. because I didn't believe in that for myself anymore. Mm. And I didn't believe, like, it made me just like question relationships. Are relationships, yeah. is this real for any of us? Totally. Are we all just like really fucked up? And even if someone is a good person who's well-intentioned, are we all just going to end up hurting one another like i feel like anybody who has had any kind of traumatic experience related to another human being where they have had their fundamental trust in human beings or love or good itself like Mm -hmm. the the ability to be good itself yeah when something is so bad has happened to you you question the reality of that that thing itself. Yeah. And for anybody who hasn't had anything that traumatic happen to them, I don't think they would understand what you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you actually had your concept, your belief in love and romance and connection to an intimate partner, like the belief in that be fundamentally challenged. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent because yeah. what I thought I knew in that relationship and what I thought was reality yes. was not. Right. And the rug was completely pulled from underneath right. me. Well said. And so it was like, okay, moving forward, it's like, how do I even trust myself anymore? Yeah. Because I thought that this was yes. a really good thing. Now, looking back, I did have internal alarm bells even before the incident happened. So, and so now and you so, bring all of that up for, <laughs> yeah, yes. well, I feel like the last couple of relationships I had. So basically this led me on a path of then just like really casually dating and knowing full well, the relationships that I was going into and choosing weren't going to last, but I was like, okay, this will be a life experience. Like as we spoke about earlier, every dating experience is a learning experience. So like, this will be fun. I'll learn something from it. And the last couple of relationships that I had, I feel like they took me so out of alignment Mm -hmm. from who I am. Like, have you ever dated someone before where like their lifestyle, their way of being is so different from yours? And like, I think I've almost had a pattern maybe of like self-abandoning. Yes. And so like I got into certain relationships where like my values, my self-care, my passions all just went out the window. And it led me to putting a lot of time into living like lives and these multiple different relationships and situations that felt so unfulfilling that mentally emotionally physically like i just felt like crap yeah and so i had to kind of hit my own rock bottom with those experiences where i felt so shitty in the life that i was living yes physically and mentally how i was experiencing life that like the last one was like a year ago and i said to myself I am not going to date or get into a relationship again unless I feel like it is more in alignment because I just don't want to, our time is our biggest commodity yes. and I don't want to waste my time anymore. And now you're in a new relationship. Now, tell the audience, <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell the people what they really want to hear. Give yeah. us the juice. Who is he? What is he? No, I was just going to be a total goofball. I actually like share, share your heart. Yeah. I'll shut the fuck up. Sorry. No, it's all good. (laughs) Um, yeah. So, um, it's kind of funny because I moved back to my hometown 
for the first time in 15 years yeah. and reconnected with a, an old friend who I had been friends with since high school. Yeah. Um, since I was like 13 years old. An old John. <laughs> yeah, since I was 13 years old, we were like best, best buds. He was one of my best buds in high school. I didn't actually know that. You didn't? No. Oh my God. No. Yeah, when I was in high school, I hated high school. I hated it. The girls were, they were not very nice to me. I felt so like kind of alien. Yeah. And there was this like, couple of guys that I connected with and they, I feel like they saved me, mm. you know, like if it wasn't for them, my high school experience would have been very, very different. I had no idea. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was just like, they, they were, they were my boys. I and, feel, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt yeah. you because I feel like you're dancing around the topic of the guy that you're seeing <laughs> now and why it's important and why it's good. Tell us, we want to know. Well, it just feels if, I'll, if I'm being fully honest, when we first connected, I didn't think it was going to be anything because we've known each other for 25 years. Right. And have you also ever like made the list of like on paper what you were looking for? Yes. It's funny. I <laughs> Any guy that I show my list, they're like, that's a really fucking long list. And I think sometimes... Whoa. You show your guy your list? I have. <laughs> I ha okay. I've shown people my list okay. and they're like, that's a really fucking big list. I thought that was weird at first, but then I was like, oh yeah, no, girls have shown me their list. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this before, but like sometimes I think especially as you get older, you can become too rigid in what you're looking for. And like some of the things that you're looking for maybe just actually aren't the most important thing. Totally. Sometimes you need to let life surprise you, delight you. And educate you on what's actually important. Yes. As opposed to what you thought what was. What you think. Pay attention to like how you feel versus how you, th what you think. Or what you've been programmed to think is important to you. <laughs> yes. yes. Versus, I feel like yeah. I've had a big fundamental shift recently around what I think is important. Mm. And so when and I. And so you, oh, I just want you to say it. <laughs> I'm. I'm slowly, Holy slowly fuck. delving in. I'm you got slowly, us on level two and we want to be on 10. I'm we, slowly unveiling. Chill out, son. This is the foreplay. Okay. Like if you will. Play. If you will. Okay. We're siblings. That's fucking weird. I'm talking to the audience. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. The foreplay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you're done. Um, back to my story. Yeah. So we connected and right away I was like, whoa, there's like some crazy chemistry here. Like yes. what's going on? Hey, I'm not going to lie. I just need to tell my perspective yeah. because I remember when you came back and I like, I'm an intuitive motherfucker. Yeah. I felt static, like Did electricity you? around you. I was like, what are you doing? Interesting. What's going on? Interesting. Continue. Oh, yeah. It was potent. Yes. Very, very potent. I know. And I think like there was like physical potency. Yeah. Like I was like feeling that like just like you ever be around someone. You're like, oh, my God. Like, wow. Yes. I can just like feel it being next to them. Yes. But. Then I, as we continued to connect, because we hadn't really connected since I lived here 15 years ago, yes. I was like, wow, like he's a really fucking amazing person on so many levels. Right. And he's been through so much. And <sighs> I guess I feel like he has helped like, and this is going to make me emotional. I feel like he's like helped melt my heart. Because of those past, that past experience 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I feel like for anybody out there who's been through like a really traumatic experience in a romantic relationship, mm -hmm. and a lot of us have been through multiple betrayals and hard things with romantic partners, you really start to armor up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize like how much protection I had around my heart. Right. And it's like this armor and just like feeling like, yeah, like <laughs> you know, you're, you become jaded and skeptical of yeah. everything. 
And I came into this situation being very jaded and skeptical. And he's just been so, I feel so safe with him. Yeah. I think that's like one of the biggest things that I've been thinking about recently is like we, we go through life and everybody talks about the butterflies, like the butterflies being a good thing. But over the last couple of years, there's been more conversation around how that can also just be your body's alarm system, like your gut being kind of like, this is something you should pay attention to. Butterflies aren't necessarily a good thing. Okay. And that can be your nervous system, your nervous system's alarm bells going off. Right. And I think back to the situations where I had butterflies, the people who I had butterflies with were more like trauma bond situations where right. they were lighting something up in me that was like, Ooh, this feels so, uh, you know, feels so exciting. You're feeling this high, right. but like, it's not healthy. Right. And the new lingo and mentality now is like, be with someone who makes your nervous system feel regulated safe. and safe. Yeah. And like, I remember when I moved totally. back here a couple months ago and he phoned me and I hadn't heard his voice in like 15 years. Yeah. And immediately I just like felt safe. I had like a rush of warmth come over my entire body just mm -hmm. hearing his voice. And then when I saw him, I like started getting emotional because I was just like, oh my God, like I forgot how it brought me back to when I was a young girl and how like they the boys used to protect me and take care of me and now I've, you know, as for many of us, we go through life and life is hard and we have to armor up, and become these boss bitches and these badass babes. And it was like, no, back then when I knew those boys, I could just be soft, shy, feminine Danae. And I love that that is the version of me that he knows. He doesn't know radio Danae. Right. He doesn't know this like more uh... boss babe. And as soon as I was around him again, I was like, oh my God, I just feel like I can just be a hundred percent myself. That's cool. I didn't really realize that. Yeah. He, he only knows that version yeah. of you. Really? Yeah. And it's like all these things in my life that I've been affirmed for, like being more the performer. Yeah. You he know? loves you for you. He just loves me for me. Nice. Um, and he's just been, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like my heart has, and it's been really nice to be able to like openly communicate and share these things with him, like to find a partner who you can talk to. I think one of the things that I think is so cool to think about is like oftentimes our wounds are from romantic partners and do happen with other people. And then they can also really be healed with the right person. One could even argue that they can only be healed with the right person. Mm. Mark Manson talks about that, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Mm -hmm. He talks about that. And I mean, a lot of wellness professionals probably do, but I've, I've only heard it from him. And he says that you can go into a therapy room and have a lot of your stuff worked on and healed, but a lot, it's actually funny. He's, yeah, he's actually really the only person that I've heard say this, mm -hmm. that a lot of your trauma responses can, can and only will be healed in real life mm -hmm. when you go into the real world and interact with new lovers, new relationships, new experiences. Yeah. And so that's beautiful for you to mirror that. Yeah. So I feel like that's been happening for me over yeah. the last couple months. Yeah. And there's still a part of me that feels this pr protective. Even tonight I was like, do I want to talk about this? Do I want to be open about this? Because there's been a part of me that's felt like, I need to protect it or I don't want to, you know, this is a defense mechanism that I think a lot of us fall into. We don't want to get too excited. We don't want to like jinx it. So I catch myself a lot of the time not wanting to jump ahead mm -hmm. because in the past maybe where I've gotten excited or felt good about someone and then been dis disappointed or let down. It's like this has now been my set point of just being like more logical, not allowing myself to feel too much, staying more in the logic, you know. Well, and the truth is, is that whether this relationship lasts a lifetime or not, it's still going to be a learning experience. Yeah. It, it might be one that ends up being a lifelong, beautiful learning experience or or not. And I mean, either way, yeah. <laughs> our society measures the success of a relationship on its length, 
versus its depth, which is total bullshit. Like mm-hmm. the fact that you're you're having this beautiful, gorgeous connection that's a mirror of that softer, more feminine, more authentic side yeah. that is being inspired to come out so that it can be held in a safe space in a in a gorgeous masculine presence like him. Yeah. That's the lesson. Yeah. Quote unquote lesson. That's the experience. That's the healing experience. So. Totally. And I think it is really cool to going back to kind of what we said before. It's like one of the learnings that I'm getting from this is to like allow myself to um, submit and to not try to control, but to just be present and allow myself to feel. And it has been very cool to just be present and to allow this to unfold and to see that like, this is probably not what I thought that I, I wanted or needed, but it's like giving me new experiences and lessons that are, I'm the happiest I've fucking been in. I don't even know when. And I am so happy with this person and it feels so great. So. And he's also done a lot of work too. Yes. A lot of work. Yeah. And so his work is reflecting your work on such a high level. Yeah. Like his healing journey is holding this might sound weird and woo woo but you know what i mean like yeah. you guys have both done a lot of work on each on, on yourselves yeah and so coming together at this point in your lives you're a gift to each other yeah oh my god so much and it's just so nice to be with someone who's done that work yeah. and he is not afraid of anything within i think i've had a pattern of dating people who've been emotionally unavailable afraid of love And to be with someone, you know, a a lot of the like male coaches out there talk about how a romantic relationship and a woman will often show a man the parts of themselves that they're afraid to look at. Because as women, we are very connected to our emotions and we are really good at seeing our shit and we're really good at seeing your shit. And so to be in a relationship with a woman who is conscious of those things we're going to we're going to hold up a mirror to show you those things. And if you're with a man who hasn't done the work or who doesn't want to really look at himself, that's not going to work. And so to be with a man who's like already done that work, like I don't have to mirror anything cuz he already knows. Right. It's just really fucking refreshing. Yeah. I'd and say the same thing is true for both sexes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. yeah, if you've got one partner who is Yeah yeah, done the work and is conscious or deep or whatever. They're going to hold up that mirror. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy. I'm falling in love. I'm good. Fun. My heart's melting. It's nice. nice. It's really nice. Good for you. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Isn't it cool how life always brings us exactly what we need? Yeah. And sometimes we kick and scream and say, no, mm-hmm. no, this isn't right. This isn't what it's supposed to be. Yeah. But if we fucking stop and like really look yeah. at what life is bringing us, the truth is, is as hard as it is sometimes to see, yeah, it's exactly what we need. Well, that was exactly me in the beginning. And then I just let go yes. and started paying attention to more like how it was feeling yes. in my body not what like I thought was important but like actually what was how it felt and now I feel like I've been opened up to a whole new way of life a new way of being and like I'm feeling a lot more balance in my life and just like overall it's just been such a positive thing so I feel like we should do this kind of podcast if not all the time it sounds like you kind of want to do it all the time I don't know <laughs> But uh, at least once a month yeah. to like do these heart to heart check ins because it'll be cool to like have another conversation a month from now and yeah. maybe touch on this and see where you're at. And Totes. There will be forever evolving learning yeah. experiences. Absolutely. And so these are the, the days of, of our, our lives. lives. If you don't know the soap opera, the <laughs> days of our, <laughs> these are the days <laughs> of our lives. <laughs> okay uh we're gonna wrap it up now because we've been talking for over an hour no you're fucking you're done done. you're we're done done we're done okay thanks for hanging out guys hopefully uh you had a great week great weekend whenever you're tuning in and um 
message us on YouTube or Instagram, say hi and tell us how much you love us. And then we will (laughs) respond with how much we love you. And then we'll internet high five. I thought you were fulfilled within and you didn't need the love of others. Did I say I needed their love? No, (laughs) I said send it in grandma and i'll respond with our love okay all right guys thanks for hanging out have a good one (laughs) okay bye. bye